Now, Karori Golf Club, I don't know if they've got uh, magpie problems, but they did install a no-go area for their premier tournament over the weekend to prevent players uh, being attacked by a pair of native falcons. Uh, when the Wellington City, City of Wellington Classic, sorry, was played on Saturday, the more than 100 entries were warned to keep a wary eye out for two aggressive birds. The club's captain warned entrants by email saying, we have nesting kariaria about 30 trees up the tree line on the 14th hole. They've been swooping golfers who get too close, so we're going to mark the area a drop zone will be established to allow a free drop from danger. Um, as it was, the birds were a no-show, which I suppose is good. Even though they had swooped on golfers the day before, and they do seem to fancy golf courses. Um, Manawatu, Miramar and Queenstown Golf Course, among just a few who have had uh, a visit from the hair ruffling uh, birds. Now, before you take your golf clubs out, please, uh, I want to find out a bit more about our native falcon. I know they are capable of flying up to speeds of 200 kilometres per hour and able to catch prey larger than themselves. They're a pretty formidable bird. Joining me now is Andy Frost. He's the chairman of... Well, I I, I need to ask Andy about this because I said uh, kariaria, but then it could be kariaria. How does Andy say it? Hello, Andy. Hello there, Leah. Nice to be on your show. Yes, nice to... What, how do you say it? Kaurirea. There we go. Kaurirea. There we go. The Falcon Trust, which is what you are the chairman of, Andy. Can you, before we can we before we start like talking about the Falcons in general, what does your trust, what does the Kaurirea Falcon Trust do? Uh, we do three main things. The first is advocacy and education. We have an excellent program that targets most of the primary school children uh, in Marlborough uh, during their, their school years. Uh, we also host visitors, and so that's part of our advocacy uh, on behalf of the Kauri area. We have a rehabilitation program, so we get birds from around the South Island that have been injured, and mm. we rehabilitate them and release them if that's possible. And if it's not possible, then we keep them in our breeding program. So we have... Uh, released over 80 birds from our breeding program since we started in 2008. Oh, wow. Oh, that's fantastic. And and is that because, Andy, they are they an, uh, considered an endangered species? Yes, they are. Um, we think there's probably about 5,000 to 8,000 left in the wild in New Zealand. They're endemic to New Zealand. Uh, so they are certainly threatened. And, uh, and they've been knocked around by... Uh, as have other species of birds in New Zealand by humans coming to New Zealand. Mm. So in New Zealand, uh, before we had humans, we only had three species of mammals on land and they were all three species of bats. So without um, stoats and cats and rats and mice and weasels and what have you, uh, the birds got used to nesting on the ground often, not, not always, sometimes they nest up in epiphytes fights and trees, but often on the ground. Oh, okay. So then, so they became prey quite quickly themselves, although all the eggs or the babies did. That's exactly right. Although the, mm. the uh, adults are fairly fierce when they're protecting their nests, and that's exactly what's happened here at the uh, Karori Golf Club, is that the yeah. birds will, will have been disturbed by people getting too close to their nest, and, and right at the moment is the time to have eggs, and shortly there'll be, it'll be the time to have, uh, have young chicks. So they're the, the parents are great parents. They they protect the young, so that's what what they're doing. But nothing against humans. They simply yeah. uh, they, they are driven to protect the young. Yeah. And Andy, do you know? Are they do they mate for life? Are they pairs? Once they're paired up, that's it. We we have a little phrase that we use. We say they mate for life, but they mourn for a day. So if a, if one of the pair yeah. um, dies, then they will go on and. Um, and they will you know, mate with another bird. Right, find another. Oh, but um, and why golf? Why golf courses? Because they seem to be. They, is it obviously because it's a lot of trees, a lot of land? They're quite happy there. Well, it's an interesting question because um, if you go back to the uh, vegetation in New Zealand before humans were here, then there was a lot of bush, and, and the cut area often would have been found in the bush. Um, flying in amongst the trees and the branches and what have you. But with, uh, with people coming and clearing land, 
uh, they've got adapted to um, to being an open country as well. So often mm. in, the, in the South Island, there'll be in areas where there are some um, some scrub or some trees, but also the, um, some open areas, so it's easy for them to find the, the little birds that they generally feed on. So right. golf courses are probably ideal. They like to sit up high, which is yep. uh, sometimes they sit up on uh, telephone poles, and they and they can sit there for hours uh, on trees or poles. And then when they see the birds that they want for dinner, uh, oh. then they'll have a, have a go. So golf courses probably. Uh, and, and the other thing about golf courses is there's people walking around, and you've got uh, if you've got a nest on a tree, and, and what appears to have happened to Croy is that a couple of golfers got got relatively close, and the birds decided, right, this is our home territory, and, yeah. uh, and we're looking after our young. You need to hop out of here. Yeah, and and Andy, as I said, don't you know, don't if you get it's a good idea, obviously, to move away from them. Don't try and like hit them or anything because. It's an offence, isn't it? They're protected? Oh, yeah, they're absolutely protected as, as threatened wildlife. As an individual, you could get a $100,000 fine if you uh, killed one. If, yeah. you're a, if you're a corporation that kills one, like a, an operating farm or something, you could get a $200,000 fine. Now, oh. they, they haven't been applied, but it, that just illustrates the seriousness that uh, we have in protecting wildlife. And when, when we talk you know, 5,000 to 8,000, that, that's a pretty small number. I know there have been some species that got to a lot less, but if we compared it to kiwi, the kiwi is probably eighty to 100,000 uh, birds. It's slightly oh. unfair on kiwi because some species of kiwi are, are much, much rarer. There's, there's quite small numbers, but that, that sort of puts it into perspective. And do you think yeah, a large flock of starlings could have 50,000 birds in it? You know, 5,000 yeah. to 8,000 is, is not a lot. God, you're right. There isn't when you put it that way. Um, so what uh, you said before, you know, they sit there and watch maybe bef- and pick out a bird they want or something they'll they'll hunt. What what are they normally feeding on, Andy? What what do they like to hunt for? Well, again, if we go back to pre-human times, they would have been uh, mainly hunting small birds, small to medium-sized birds, uh, insects, and probably. Um, uh, lizards, um, you know, geckos and skinks and that, that as well. These days it's a little bit uh, broader because we do have introduced mammals so there will be times that they will take out mice and, and other um, uh, and other uh, mammals. But mainly mainly small birds and mainly introduced birds. The, uh, people get concerned about the native bird population and certainly if there's career around sanctuaries that have got very rare small birds that can, can be an issue. But um, in general, most of the birds that they attack are, are common um, introduced birds. 